academic writing, and web courses in SC writing. Lecture 7. The Department of Foreign Language, Two Foreign Languages. Senior Lecturer, Nurmana Vashnar. The objectives of the lecture are to study kinds of adverb clauses, to study punctuation of adverb clauses, to study time clauses, to study place clauses, and to study that clauses. The plan. Kinds of adverbs clauses. 2. Punctuation of adverb clauses. 3. Time clauses. 4. Place clauses. 5. That clauses. The following key words will be used during the lecture, such as punctuation, conjunctions, place, concession, manner, purpose, adverb, clauses, condition, common, time, etc. So, sentence complexity and embedding. Adverb clauses are clauses, a group of words with a subject-predicate pairing, as we have learned. They are signaled with a, an introductory word called a subordinating conjunction, which is usually a single word, but may be a compound word with or without a space between the word root words. The choice of the subordinating conjunction depends on what question the adverb clause answers, its meaning. Some subordinating conjunctions refer to time, some to place, some to manner, and others to conditions or situations. So as the subordinating conjunctions that begin adverb clauses share meanings with both adverbs and prepositions, and because sometimes the same word can be used in all three adverbial structures, it is easy to become confused about which word is the appropriate one for each type of, the, of structure. Native speakers of English can rely on intuition, but difficulties arise for non-native speakers, and sometimes native speakers too, in learning which words are adverbs only, which are prepositions only, and which are subordinating conjunctions only. For example, after can be both a preposition and a subordinating conjunction, but is not standard when used as an adverb. For example, what are you doing after the game? After is a preposition. What are you doing after you graduate? Here, after is a subordinating conjunction. What are you doing after? After is used as an adverb. The word because, on the other hand, is only a subordinating conjunction. We must use because of as a preposition, not the word because alone, and it is not standard to use because as an adverb. Again, the following examples. I took an umbrella because of the rain, because of is a preposition. I took an umbrella because it was raining, because here is a subordinating conjunction. I took an umbrella because, because is structured here as a, an adverb. So, adverb clauses. Adverb is a part of speech that describe, describes an adjective, another adverb or a verb. Adverbs give more information about how an action was performed in general. They answer questions like how, why, where and when. An adverb does this with just one word, but groups of words can also perform this function in sentences. For example, she walked slowly. She walked like an old lady. She walked as if she were heading to the gallows. In each of these sentences, the words answer the questions how and describe the verb walked. In the first sentence, there is only one adverb, but in the second, other two sentences, a group of words work together to act as an adverb. What is a clause? A clause is a group of words that contain both a subject and a verb. This differs from a phrase which doesn't have a subject and a verb. For example, uh, such an adverb is also known as an adverbial clause, are dependent clauses that function as adverbs. Since they are dependent clauses, they must have a subordinating conjunction to connect them to the rest of the sentence. 
being able to support to spot a subordinating conjunction will help you to recognize an adverb clause. So the following examples are grouped by what type of adverb question they answer. When. After, when, until, soon, before, once, while, as soon as, whenever, by the time. How. If, whether or not, provided, in case, unless, even, if, in the event. Why. Because, as, since, so, in order that, now that. Where. Wherever, where. Adverb clauses can be placed at the beginning, middle, or end of a sentence. When placed at the beginning or in the middle, they require a comma to offset them from the rest of the sentence. Whether you like it or not, you have to go. The boy also is very bright, failed math. However, when adverb clause is at the end of a sentence, yeah, com no comma is needed. So, adverb clauses are clauses, a group of words with a subject-predicate pairing. They are signaled with an introductory word called a subordinating conjunction, which is usually a single word, but may be a compound word with or without a space between the root words. The choice of the subordinating conjunction depends on what question the adverb clause answers its meaning. Some subordinating conjunctions refer to time, some refer to place, some to manner, and others to situations or condi conditions. So, adverb clauses of place. These adverbial clauses answer the question where. Adverb clauses of time answer the question when. Adverb clauses of cause answer the question why. Adverb clauses of purpose answer the question why. Adverb clauses of condition answer the question how. Adverb clauses of concession answer the question how. Adverb clauses add rich detail. While adverb clauses are a little more complicated than simple adverbs, they are very useful in adding richer detail to your writing by explaining how and why things happen. When you begin to add about subordinating conjunctions and dependent clauses, to your writing, you add interest by varying the rhythm of your sentences and layering in important information to create a complete picture to the reader. An adverbial clause is the dependent clause that functions as an adverb. That is, the entire clause modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. As with all clauses, it contains a subject and a predicate. Though the subject as well as the predicate, verb may sometimes be omitted and implied. An adverbial clause is fronted by a subordinating conjunction, sometimes called a trigger word. In the examples, so you see, according to Sidney, Grunbaum, and Randolph Quirk, adverbial clauses function mainly as adjuncts or disjuncts, which parts also perform in a sentence as adverbial phrases or as adverbial prepositional phrases. Unlike clauses, phrases do not contain a subject and predicate. They are contrasting. Concerning punctuation, when an adverb clause begins the sentence, you are to use a comma to separate the two clauses. For example, even though it was expensive, he bought the car. When the adverb clause finishes the sentence, there is no need for a comma. Example, he bought the car even though it was expensive. Even though, though, although. Even though it was expensive, he bought the car. Though he does doubt nuts, he has given them for his diet. Here we use a comma. Also, the cause was difficult, comma, he passed with the highest marks. Whereas, whereas we have lots of time, do your homework. I have very little time indeed. Mary rich is rich, comma, while well, I am poor. Whereas and while show clauses in indirect opposition to each other. So, using adverb clauses to express conditions, this type are, are often called if clauses in grammar books and allow conditional sentence patterns. Adverb clauses of time. When he was talking on the phone when I arrived. When she called, we had already eaten much. I washed the dishes when my daughter fell asleep. We'll go to lunch when you come to visit. 
Here, when means at that moment, at that time, etc. Notice the different tenses used in relationship to the clause beginning with when. It is important to remember that when takes either the simple past or the present, the dependent clause changes tense in relation to the when clause. Before. We will finish before he arrives. She had left before I telephoned. Before means before that moment. It is important to remember that before takes either the simple past or the present. After. We will finish after he comes. She ate after I had left. After means after that moment. It is important to remember that after takes the present for future events or the past or past perfect for past events. While as. She began cooking while I was finishing my homework. I was finishing my homework. As I was finishing my homework, she began cooking. While and as, as mean during that time. While and as are both usually used with the past continuous because the meaning of during the time, which indicates the action in progress. By the time. By the time he finished, I had cooked dinner. We will have finished our homework by the time they arrive. By the time expresses the idea that one event has been completed before another. It is important to notice the use of the past perfect for past events and future perfect for future events in the main clause. This is because of the idea of something, something happening up to another point in time. Since. I have played since tennis since I was young, a young boy. Since means from that time. We use the present perfect continuous with since. Since can also be used with a specific point in time. As soon as. He will let us know as soon as he decides or as soon as he has decided. As soon as here means when something happens immediately afterwards. As soon as is very similar to when it emphasizes that the event will occur immediately after the other. We usually use the simple present for future events, although present perfect can also be used. Whenever every time. Whenever he comes, we go to have lunch at Dick's. We take a hike every time he visits. Whenever and every time mean each time something happens. We use the simple present or the simple past in the past because whenever and every time express habitual action. The first, second, third, fourth, etc. Next, last time. The first time I went to New York, I was intimidated by the city. I saw Jack the last time I went to San Francisco. The second time I played tennis, I began to have fun. The first, second, third, fourth, next, last time means that specific time. We can use these forms to be more specific about which time or number of times something happened. So, summary. Sentence complexity and embedding. Adverb clauses are signaled with an introductory word called a subordinating conjunction, which is usually a single word, but may be a compound word. Adverb clauses are clauses, a group of words, with a subject predicative period. Adverb clauses may be clauses of time, place, condition, manner, purpose, concession. Functional adverb clauses say when something happens by referring to a period of time or another event. They talk about a possible or counterfactual situation and its consequences. Adverb clauses indicate the purpose of an action. They indicate the reason for something. Make two statements, one of which contrasts with the other or makes it seem surprising. They talk about the location or position of something. They state comparison of a skill, size, or amount, etc. Adverb clauses talk about someone's behavior or the way something is done. They indicate the result of an act or event. So, revision. While getting for the lecture and practical tasks, lessons, be ready to answer the following questions. What are adverb clauses? What types of adverb clauses do you know? What is the function of adverb clauses? What do you know about the punctuation of adverb clauses? The following sources will help you for preparing for the practical tasks and revising the lecture material.